What's the crack? Big dose. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. We're getting after it. Huh. I was going to make a trap. Is there a, tra a baseball player called Travis Hafner? We're getting fucking Travis Hafner. Hafner it. Okay, I'm sorry. It's Monday morning. This is like the first thing I'm doing. My eyelids just cracked open. So that's what's cracking literally my fucking eyelids. Um, it's Monday, which means we are doing another draft. Another 2021 fantasy football mock draft. And y'all know if you've been following me, these aren't actually mock drafts. These are best ball drafts on Underdog Fantasy, the single greatest fantasy platform in all of the world. If you are looking to prep for your draft, if your draft is coming up within the next week, the next two weeks, three weeks or whatever, Underdog Fantasy is the single greatest app in order to prep for it. Okay. Underdog Fantasy, the link will be down below. First link in the description will take you straight to the app store. Okay. So I'm sitting here at the 104. This is a 12 team league. This is a 12 team league, half PPR. And we're starting one quarterback. I'll minimize myself eventually. Um, so we have C-Mac, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara. And I'm sitting here. And you have Derrick Henry. You have Ezekiel Elliott. And I uh, actually get this question quite a lot. Is it crazy to take Zeke over Derrick Henry? Is it fucking crazy? <sighs> I'm not cursing for the rest of the video. I'm sorry. We're going to take Derrick Henry. And what I'll say is this. I'm going to take Henry over Ezekiel Elliott. He's done it for too many years in a row. He's been too consistent. He's probably the single best specimen at the running back position we've ever seen. Going into this year, I just don't see the, the offense being much different. Yes, they might be a little bit different in terms of play calling. But listen, you just give Derrick Henry 22 carries. You, you chuck it into the middle of his stomach and do his abdomen area. And every once in a while, he's breaking it off for 80. You put it into his stomach when they're in between two to three yards, and he's going to do the same thing he's getting. I think we're thinking too hard about Derrick Henry now. Like, the fact that he's becoming a fade for some people in the top three or four picks just seems abysmal to me. It just makes no fucking sense. It's like you're trying, you're just getting too cute. There's just no reason to fade a guy like Derrick Henry. That being said, will I be mad at you for taking a Zeke over Derrick Henry? Absolutely not. Absolutely fucking not. Okay, because Zeke's going to be a fucking monster this year, too. Oh, boy. I said the F word like five times. I got a problem. <sighs> Somebody call the ambulance, but not for me. Um, okay, so Zeke, Zeke's great setup as well. Dallas offense is going to be running smoothly. Are we worried about Dak's injury? Uh, not so much, guys. Again, we still have a month left until the season actually starts. I know that Dak and the Cowboys kick off on the Thursday night football game, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, so Zeke's up there. He's going to catch a lot of passes in this pass-heavy offense. They're going to score a lot of points, so he's going to be the goal line back there. Uh, I just think there's, I don't know, there's a chance that Ezekiel Elliott is – not as good as he was in his prime or that Zeke was uh or that Zeke splits a little more work with Tony Pollard this year either way I think you're just I think you're just uh tooth and nail here with those two and I just think there's no reason to fade Derrick Henry at the three because he's been so good he could he could drop off 600 rushing yards and still be uh like the NFL leader in rushing yards okay I got to minimize my socials because they look ugly on the screen but go follow me at Instagram uh, on Instagram at Nick Ercolano same thing on Twitter love y'all <clears throat> okay so some interesting picks we have here. We're starting to see the back end of the first round get a little bit more wide receiver heavy. We're starting to see the wide receivers occupy like the almost the entire back end of the first round. That's interesting. This week is all this is going to be an entire strategy video for y'all. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week, I'm going to go through every pick. So tomorrow's video is going to be the optimal strategy for your draft if your picks one through four. Wednesday is going to be the optimal strategy for your draft if your picks five through eight, and then. Thursday is going to be if your picks nine through 12. So we got a little song song for everybody. Um, I've already filmed tomorrow's video. So the beginning parts are pretty, pretty easy. You can see basically what I did here and how I'll kind of uh, lay that out for you guys. Once we get into the back half of the second round, um, then we start to get into that questionable running back area. We have Eckler going off at the 111. Saquon finally falling into the 112 range. We have Ridley at 2-1, which is deservedly so. We haven't heard a lot of, a lot of chatter out of, uh, out of Antonio Gibson camp 
out there in Washington. But I think no news is good news. We haven't heard any setbacks. We haven't heard anything that he's dinged up his toe or whatever. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little less concerned about the injury than where I was a month or two months ago. Nick Chubb at the 2-3, D-Hop 2-4, Jonathan Taylor at the 2-5 is still a little bit too rich for me, knowing what we know about Carson Wentz and Quentin Nelson. I would I would consider, I would dabble, you know, he's probably going to take Joe Mixon here, and I would take Joe Mixon otherwise, but I probably would have dabbled with, um, with Jonathan Taylor at the 2-9 if he fell to me. Now, we're sitting here at the back of the second round, and normally I like to start off with two running backs here, um, but... I'm not opposed to grabbing the upper echelon of wide receivers and kind of stacking them bike to bike. We have Justin Jefferson dealing with the injury, and I actually think Jefferson is probably going to fall as a value because of it if you're drafting within the next few whatever. Um, because of that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take Clyde, and I don't necessarily love Clyde at the 2-9. You'll see in my rankings, which are up on bdge.store. The draft guide is on its way. I'm getting on a call at noon, and I'm hoping that they are the web development company is giving me the okay, the green light, the fucking boop button to set that bitch live. So possibly later today, but I'm pretty, pretty sure we're going to have this draft guide up and live by the end of this week. Um, I'm working on the Bible right now, and the Bible is, you know, the next couple of videos are going to be strategy videos, but the BDGE Bible is this monster fucking write-up I do, basically following all the trends, which is why Underdog's beautiful, because I get to do so many mock drafts and, and drafts throughout the summer um, that follow all the trends. I like that J.K. Dobbins is starting to go earlier and earlier again. I think he deserves a little bit more hype. Oh, yeah, okay. Justin Jefferson not falling. Keenan Allen, Haynes. Haynes just killing me there with that double schmack. The double schmackaroo on me. I was hoping one of those wide receivers fell to me. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens here at the 3-4. Here's a, Oh, that's beautiful. Here's a draft board for you guys. Let me minimize my annoying ass. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. That would be very much appreciated. Darren Waller going off at the 3-2. And there goes C.D. Lamb. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So we're sitting here. I'm not going to take a tight end. Uh, we already have two running backs, and these ones are it's a little bit too rich for me at this point on Swift or Carson. So I'm, I'm not going to think about it, and we're just going to go with Terry McLaurin, one of the premier route runners in the NFL right now. You bring in a slinger like Fitzpatrick. I, I think there's risk there. I think there's risk in Washington on the fact that, you know, Fitzpatrick could just flame out. He could just not be a good NFL quarterback, and that team could kind of be running to the ground. And when I say running to the ground, I mean physically, because they could be a defensive first team. They could be a team that just relies on the running game a lot and the volume in the passing game. You know, Terry McLaurin, listen, he had, what do you have, 100 and, uh, let's check this out real quick. Terry McLaurin had 134 targets last year in 15 games, okay? You bring in Curtis Samuel, you have Adam Humphreys, you bring in De'Ami Brown. Um, AGG is actually coming back from injury, I believe, right? Did he? Am I thinking of someone else? Or did AGG, Antonio Gandy-Golden, I, I feel like he tore his ACL last year or something. But regardless, they have a lot of weapons in Washington. Um, there's a chance that Terry finishes with around the same number of targets that he had last year, right? Like, if he finished with 125 to 135 targets... I'd be wildly disappointed, but I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be absolutely shocked. So I think that's within his range of outcomes, which is what you factor in. But Terry's also a guy who's so good at being a wide receiver. He's so fa he's again he's 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 a he's like Robert Woods with a little bit better route running and uh, and four three five wheels. So if you're like you're you're basically creating a player in Madden, and if and if they were like okay, you have to cap this guy at six feet tall or whatever, and uh you know the two hundred pounds. Terry would be like the ideal fit. Like everyone would obviously make their guy look like fucking DK Metcalf or whatever. But you, 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 if you, if you could take all the attributes and put them, you know, stick the fucking joystick all the way to the right on, on all the attributes. That's what you get from Terry. So, uh, Terry at the three, four, I'm fine with there getting my first wide receivers. Um, yeah, so, 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 so for those of y'all that are not an underdog, again, the first link in the description will take you to whatever app store that your phone has and you'll download it. And these drafts are all $3 buy-in drafts. Okay. So they're not actually mock drafts, but you are playing for money. 
Uh, you don't do any in-season moves. This is what best ball is. If you're just being introduced to best ball, best ball is an awesome, awesome new way to play fantasy football. It's literally, you don't do any in-season moves, so no waiver wire, no trading, no uh, setting lineups. You just draft a big-ass team. So this is 18 rounds, uh, no kickers, no defense. And each week, the software automatically starts the best players at each position. It's one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, and one flex. Okay, so you put $3 in, and if you finish each week, it starts the best players. You get the point total from that week from your best players, and then at the end of the year, whoever has the most points, whatever finishes in the top three, wins money. Okay, so if you're in the top three, you'll win whatever the buy-in is. They have $3 leagues, $5 leagues, 10 25 50 100 whatever it is if you, however much revenue you want to diversify around the buy-ins um that's an underdog and right now they have a fucking amazing promo running where if you deposit ten dollars right say you deposit ten dollars right now you'll be able to do three three dollar drafts right and that'll prep you for your actual draft if you use the promo code bdge when you deposit you're getting 25 free dollars on top of that so you're gonna have 35 dollars to draft with okay that's 11 drafts you can do 11 drafts between now and whenever your real big money draft is and be set you're set for life okay set for life like your fucking rich aunt in italy just died 35 dollars. you'll have three two dollars left over buy yourself a big ass iced coffee like this and just run through 11 drafts it's a beautiful thing we're about to be on the clock this is interesting i keep seeing Mahomes fall further and further and further and further and further and I'm wondering why that is. He was going off at the end of the third round in most drafts, started pushing the early fourth, and now he's mid end of fourth. We just saw him go off at the 470. He's the first one. And I'm trying my hardest. Ah, oh, C Mac. Kamak took Ayuk. I've been I've been uh getting like substantially higher on Ayuk. It's becoming a problem. I actually took him at the four four the other day. It wasn't a tournament, I believe. So okay. Um I do need wide receivers. Jamar Chase T. Higgins again. I, I, I'm I'm not like super super high on. I'm gonna grab Darrell Henderson. I really like him at running back here. So we've started off with three running backs. We started off with uh, one wide receiver here. Here's what I want to do. I really want Kyler to fall to me. I was hoping Mahomes kept going so that I'd have a better chance of getting Kyler. I'm hoping Kyler falls to me at the five four um, because I think he's a difference maker. Even in one quarterback leagues, I'm very much willing to pay a premium price for him. Uh, otherwise, I'm pretty good at running back, and I don't think anyone in this tier is worth jumping up for or going nuts about. Um, I'm really, a really, really, you'll see in tomorrow's video, actually, I talk a lot about Kyler and Darrell Henderson, so I won't really dive too deep into my strategy. If, you know, early round picks, if you're pick one, uh, 101 through 104, and you get to this end of fourth, early fifth round, the, the, the uh, Darrell Henderson Kyler stack is like my favorite thing to do there. And this just happens to play out perfectly if Kyler drops me. Uh, I just don't understand how you can go with a guy like Mike Davis. I, I was looking at a, a video of Mike Davis interviewing Calvin Ridley. Mike Davis looks so fat. He looks so fat. I don't think he knows that the season starts in three weeks. Come on, Kyler. Just fall, just fall to a motherfucker. Just fall to a motherfucker. Uh, otherwise, we got a lot of good choices here at what ooh Lamar over Kyler love that we have a lot of good choices here at wide receiver I feel like I'm gonna get sniped again fucking let's go let's go my one of my instincts is to I, I probably need to start getting a few more shares of Adam Thielen right now and he's still uh, listen I do a lot of these drafts so what I would say is like don't really focus too much on the players I'm picking as much as like the player analysis I'm giving. Okay. Cause we're going to talk about a lot of different players on these drafts and I'm going to draft random ass teams. You know, I've been doing this for, for months now. So I have tons of teams with different builds and different strategies and whatever. So, um, with, with that being said, you know, wider, uh, Adam Thielen has, I've loudly made this clear that he is on my fade list. His ADP of 47 overall, the back end of the fourth round, he just got picked mid fifth, but I expect that to rise up with the Justin Jefferson news. Uh, and that is why I probably should be getting some shares of him. With Justin Jefferson, he has an AC sprain, okay? He's got an AC sprain in his shoulder. Supposedly, it's grade one. It's not serious. They say day-to-day. -day, uh, but if you actually listen to any doctors that do analysis on this, they'll tell you that this is a one- to two-week, if not three-week recovery timetable to be 100%. Um, so, despite it saying day-to-day, -day, he's not actually day-to-day. -day. He's probably more week-to-week, -week, but it's not as concerning because it's a grade one and it's not as serious as you know grade two or grade three would have put him into the season for sure uh that being said 
the shoulder thing is a tricky thing. We've seen a lot of players deal with these AC sprains or shoulder separations. Anything in the shoulder area is a really, really high re-injury risk. Uh, at the running back position, we see it. At the wide receiver position, we see it because wide receivers are always putting their arms up. Uh, wide receivers are falling hard on their shoulders when they come. To, anytime you're getting tackled, you're getting tackled onto your shoulders. So the re-injury risk, the probability of uh, spraining that shoulder to a worse degree, spraining that shoulder again, um, or favoring other parts of your body because you're scared to land on that shoulder starts to become an issue. So with Justin Jefferson, I'm not saying that necessarily he's going to go into the season less than 100%. I think that with a guy like Dalvin Cook who keeps separating his shoulder over and over again, we know that based on fucking actual doctor work, when you do separate your shoulder, when you do have these shoulder injuries, um, you go into the season with, you know, a 15 to 20% higher re-injury risk of that shoulder. So you start to factor those things, right? Everything's a give and take with fantasy. You start to push the needle down a little bit on Adam Thielen, sa Thielen saying, okay, if we give Justin Jefferson a re-injury risk of like 12 to 18% more than he had originally, that means Adam Thielen's ugliness of what he did last year will start to rise up he's got a little bit of a higher floor or a little bit of a higher ceiling i should say because if jefferson's gone Thielen becomes a target monster obviously um and for those for those y'all that are new to the channel you know i have tons of videos that i've done over the last couple months that you can go bike into the archives and check out over guys that i'll be fading this year guys that i'm targeting this year you know best values etc Thielen's been a guy that i've been fading pretty heavily because he relied completely on touchdowns last year finished with 14 of them but if you look at the targets, the receptions, the receiving yards totals, he he ranked around wide receiver 24, 25, 26, 27 for all of those statistics. And that's what's more predictable. Um, so I've, I've been off the because I just think Justin Jefferson takes over as the alpha and it's pretty fucking plain to see. Ooh, we have Dak falling in these drafts. I'm not going to go with another Dak. I probably need to grab. I probably need to start hitting the wide receivers heavy. So, Quentin Sutton, Mike Williams, man, this is some bottom tier shit. We're sitting at the 6'9. Definitely don't like any of the tight ends on the board. We have Kyler. I will end up drafting two quarterbacks overall, but since I grabbed Kyler, I don't have to really worry about grabbing another high end one. We're hitting here at the 6'9. Quentin Sutton, I'm very hesitant on the ACL because he's hesitant on the ACL. We have Mike Williams. We have Tyler Boyd. Uh, we'll just grab Boyd because he's fucking boring, and I don't know. There's not a lot of not a lot of juice to squeeze uh, out of these underdog drafts anymore. And this is why you practice. This is why you get onto this platform to know, you know, when you are in crunch time. This is this is also a way for me to dial in on my rankings, right? So when I'm on the clock, I figure out um, when I'm sitting there facing the question: Do I like Tyler Boyd or Cortland Sutton more? And clearly, uh, in my heart of hearts, we believe Tyler Boyd is the better pick. Although I don't know if I actually believe. Here's the thing with Tyler Boyd: He's been fine. He's been um, you know, he had his, he had his time as the wide receiver one and he popped off and he's a very good wide receiver overall. And I really like, uh, I really like him as a player. However, you keep adding more and more targets here, more and more legitimate playmakers, T Higgins, Jamar Chase. We have the uncertainty with Joe Burrow's knee. Uh, Tyler Boyd becomes like a really boring wide receiver three. Sure, he'll have his like high end wide receiver two, low end wide receiver one weeks, but I think he just becomes a really boring floor play in the wide receiver three mold. And those are not the guys I'm trying to target necessarily down here. I think guys like uh, even like Devontae Smith, I probably should have went with have higher ceilings, even though he's dealing with the knee sprain. I'm not as concerned with Devontae Smith's knee sprain right now. I feel like Haynes is having a nice draft. Eh, I take that fucking all the way bike. That's not too bad. I don't like what he did at the four or five turn though. Davis and Miles Gaskin. Chase Edmonds, Justin Herbert, early seventh round. Okay, we can kind of get our pick of another decently tiered wide receiver. We have Mike Williams, who I'm pretty high on. Um I'm surprised he didn't go with Mike Williams and Justin Herbert to stack up there. Michael Gallup, who I like. I don't really like DJ Chark or Visca. I kind of love Antonio Brown. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get my guy here. I feel like Brown is on the precipice of, uh, of, of being like 85% of Antonio Brown again. And everything out of camp has been that Brown has just been fucking smooth. You gotta remember, like he, he was on the, on the streets last year. He came in eight weeks into the season. 
Uh, they already had established rapport between Brady and Evans and and, uh, and Godwin and like even them they didn't really have rapport. Of, I don't know everything that I that I feel about Antonio Brown is just that like he's he's fucking bike. I felt like my timeline was blowing up yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Nick Urquano. Tony Brown has a chance to be the best wide receiver on the Bucks this year. He's dominating camp on full being sync with Tom Brady this season. This is a f- yeah, I don't know about that. That's just a random guy who doesn't actually like know anything about football talking about Antonio Brown. I want like beat reporters. I want the, I want the juicy shit from practices. Tom Brady with a touchdown to Antonio Brown, exactly. Great team period of practice for the offense, but it's Antonio Brown's day. Four catches in that period, including some highlight reel grabs. He's dominating. Saw so this over and over again at Steelers practice. I, dude, I, ah, man. Uh, I think everyone needs to be drafting as much Antonio Brown as you possibly can. He's, he's got to be one of my highest owned wide receivers in, in uh, underdog. On underdog, they show you your exposure too, which is pretty fucking neat. Um, I don't want to pull it up now because it's going to make the viewing experience clunky, but see, let me see if I can pull it up on my phone and I'll show you guys who my highest exposed two players is it's like a fucking disease out here oh this is kind of embarrassing okay so my highest known quarterbacks right now are Jalen Hurts Tom Brady Dak Prescott Lamar Jackson Kyler Murray I own 21% exposure to Jalen Hurts and yes I am nervous about it don't fucking at me my high oh oh boy um oh actually if we if we do by money if we do by entry fees it's a little a little less scary drafted percentage okay so my highest owned players at the running back position david johnson chris carson damian harris miles gaskin actually aaron jones if we switch that to entry fees so you can sort it like you can look at your exposure by like just straight up the number of times you've drafted a player like the percentages of drafts that you've drafted a guy in or your or your money entered into a league. So if like obviously if you if you enter a fifty dollar league, that's probably a little bit more important. So you could look at like the number of dollars that you've exposed to that player in a sense. And when we do it that way, um oof, Cam Akers number six on this list. That's fucking that hurts my heart a little bit. Oh boy. Uh again, this is this is why I'm sitting here waiting on wide receivers, man, because because even after we go Ah, nice pick with Jar- Jarvis Landry. I really wanted Jarvis Landry there. Like, really, 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 really bad. Um, Michael Thomas, no. I'm just not taking any Michael Thomas before, like, round 15. Elijah Moore. I like Elijah Moore. Marquise Brown is hurt. Yeah, I'm going to go with Elijah Moore here. I think he set up the tee off. Probably more so in the second half of the year. I think he starts as a, I think he's a starter there. I think he's a starter there. I think maybe he's a 60 to 70% snap guy. And then second half of the year, we see that go up to like 90 to 95%. And Moore just feels like a can't miss prospect at this point. As long as Zach Wilson is not straight duty, uh, Elijah Moore should, should be in for a big year. Uh, okay, so my highest exposure to running backs in terms of entry fees – Chris Carson, Damian Harris, Aaron Jones, Miles Gaskin, J.K. Dobbins. I like that list. Not bad. Uh, wide receiver. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, so this gets interesting. If we go by entry fees, my wide, my wide receivers are Brashad Perriman, Deontay Johnson, Marquez Valdez-Cantling, Amon Ross St. Brown, Darnell Mooney. Okay. Uh, and obviously, you know, that has to do with the fact that I think all those guys are values. And I, I, I got so much more MVS when uh, Aaron Rodgers was supposedly retiring. If we do it by draft percentage, ooh, this is kind of ugly too. Amon Ra, MVS. These are like all, sounds like STDs, this whole fucking list. Amon Ra, uh, MVS, Deontay Johnson, John Brown, Marvin Jones. Okay, so I like I like my Marvin Jones exposure there. Um, John Brown, I'm getting... I'm I, I'm gonna completely stop drafting John Brown. I I think uh, I think John Brown. I don't know. I'm starting to get this gut feeling that I think John Brown's time is done. I think he's just old, coming off too many injuries, and all the hype out of camp is around Brian Edwards and Darren Waller. Obviously, is in for a monster, monster workload. Yeah, I just I just I'm just I'm just off. I'm just off Johnny B. What's going on with the quarterback situation? Do I have a Bucks? Oh, I do. I have AB, so I might just take that stack again. Do I stack? 
do I stack or do I grab another wide receiver? See, there's no one else on this list that I really want right now at wide receiver. Do we have any tight ends there sitting? Marquise Brown, too hurt. Corey Davis, I just took a jet. Uh, I'm going to grab my boy. I'm going to grab my fucking boy, Tanyan. He is my tight end. You're gonna, Y'all are going to shit on me for this, but he is my tight end six. I moved him ahead of Mark Andrews yesterday. Though what's the difference between him and Mark Andrews? Tell me that. Riddle me that. I don't see much of a difference. One's in a much better passing offense. Maybe one of them is not competing with Devontae Adams. Maybe. Maybe. But when your quarterback's going to throw for double the yards, why does it fucking matter? I love Robert Tunyon. I'm sorry. That's just the that's just the guy I'm getting fucking everywhere. He's exactly what you look for in a breakout tight end, but he's priced as if he hasn't he's priced as if he hasn't broke out yet. Like we look at all these other guys, Tyler Higby, fucking Noah Fan, Irv Smith, like those guys haven't really broke out yet, but we're projecting them as if they are, as if they have. Or we're just wrongly projecting Robert Tunyon as if he hasn't. Um after those guys I have okay, so Amon Ra is my highest owned wide receiver in terms of percentages. Uh, let me pull up the draft board for you guys while I'm fucking blabbering away over here. Okay, so in terms of tight ends, we have ooh, interesting. Eric Ebron is number one. I think I have him. I think I got him in the 18th round of these drafts, like over and over again. I just feel like he's a he's a solid bet for five to six touchdowns in the 18th pick. If you only drafted one tight end, or if you want to grab uh, if you want to grab a third tight end on your team or something, I think Ebron's like kind of solid. Um, after that, I have Jonu Smith, Robert Tunyon, Mike Kosicki, Austin Hooper, all value guys down there. So I'm I'm not like too picky with the guys that once they drop into like the 12th, 13th round. Get get whatever fucking tight ends kind of sitting there, um, but I will be jumping up for guys like Jonu Smith and Robert Tunyon. I love both of those players a lot. Uh, okay, let's see where are we at. Russell Gage is another guy that I think is worth starting to grab more shares of for me. Ninth, tenth round. Um, he's a guy who saw 122 targets last year, which was oh wait, 100 and how many fucking targets this guy have last year? He was 22nd in the NFL last year in targets amongst wide receivers, which is kind of fucking crazy. Let's see. Yes, he had 110 targets last year, tied for 22nd in the NFL. He has many as Tyler Boyd. He had more than Chase Claypool, Mike Evans, C.D. Lamb, Adam Thielen, T. Higgins, A.J. Brown, Michael. G- like, that's kind of crazy. And obviously, Julio is gone now. Um, so we can expect him to man the number two wide receiver role. I think his upside is kind of stopped at a maybe a high volume slot receiver, but he's not really like a big play explosive guy. So I'm not in love with him, but I think he's a great like wide receiver four or five on your best ball teams. I like how my team is coming out so far. What do you guys think? What y'all thinking? Kyler Murray is quarterback. We got Derrick Henry, Clyde, Daryl Henderson is running backs, wide receivers. We got Terry, Tyler Boyd, Antonio Brown, Elijah Moore, and tight end Robert Tunyon. This is one of my, uh, this is a team that I actually like. Usually I hop on here with you guys and I hate my team. I'm not paying attention. We got fucking auto picks and I don't know. Fucking Latavius Murray ends up on my team. Okay. Let's get it. Mm, Joe Burrow's starting to drop. I kind of like Henry Ruggs, man. I kind of like Henry Ruggs. Uh, I should stack Rondell Moore with. Kyler Murray, I'm going to go with Ruggs, man. I'm, like, really not over the idea that Ruggs can break out still. I know he had an awful, awful rookie year. Um, I think that was a product of the Raiders coaching staff, and I think they're realizing that they're fucking morons, and now they're starting to use Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs a little bit more. So I will be taking some shares of Henry Ruggs here. Uh, May 10th round might be early, but, again, you got to dial in. The, the underdog ADP is just so, so vicious, man. It's fucking savagery. It is. It is. It is animal with a machete out in the woods, which is happening on Saturday, by the way. And a lot of you guys have been asking about when Animal's punishment is happening for the Etown Get Down League. It is this Saturday, August fourteenth. Let's go. We got a busy ass week. We got a busy, busy fucking week. Got five straight videos. 
for content. We've got hopefully the draft guide launching this week. Oh, also, 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 today is the last day. If you guys haven't signed up for Underdog, anyone who signs up for Underdog today, this is the last day for it, enters the uh, the BDGE NYC Draft Weekend giveaway. We have one spot open. Underdog is completely paying for you to come out to New York City to party with us and join a high-stakes fantasy football league uh, the weekend of the 27th to the 29th. So if you go onto Underdog, if you click the link down below, if you download the app, and you use the promo code BDGE when you deposit $10, not only are you going to have $35 to draft with because they're beautiful people, but you're automatically entered into the underdog giveaway, which is one spot to come out to New York City, flown out, stay in a dope Airbnb for the weekend, which happens to be my birthday weekend. We're going to fucking rage. We're going to hang out. We're going to drink margaritas. We're going to walk around the city and hang out with the crackheads, and we're going to do a fantasy football draft, a live draft in which we compete against each other for the entirety of the year. Normal season-long draft. So if you use a promo code BDGE, you will be entered into that, and we are picking the winner within the next couple days. So make sure you get onto that shit ASAP, Rocky. Beep boop. Okay. Um, tight ends, I really like. Okay, so that's the thing. Like jo Jonu just continues to fall there, and you guys are making a mistake by letting him drop. Jonu's going to have a, a big, 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 year uh we like a lot of the wide receivers left we like jacoby myers we like terrace marshall we like sterling shepherd but we like gus edwards a lot more and i am all in on mr gus at the 11th round uh again so if, if, if you're drafting in these drafts what you want to be doing is making sure that you draft i would say the max number of running backs you want to get is six 18 rounds the max you want to grab is six i think five is okay as well I usually end my uh, my my teams with five. Sometimes I go up to six, but you want to make sure that your five running backs are probably picked by the eleventh round because once you get like one, once these guys go off the board, you're looking at handcuffs. You know, you there's nobody else that you're sure is getting you points out of your lineup. Okay, you could say what you want about Name Hines. You could say what you want about Singletary, Madison, Rashad Penny. I don't know all of these guys. Um, I don't think any of them are really guaranteed fantasy points. So, whereas a guy like us, Edwards, you know he's getting double-digit carries. So, you really want to round out your running back core by the 10th or 11th round in these drafts because they go down quickly. And at the wide receiver position, you could still get points left and right from many, many places. Marquez Callaway, too much smoke and fire going on over there. So, we're going to continue drafting him. But I like I like these guys left on the board. So, if we're talking about late-round wide receivers, uh, Jacoby Myers, he's an interesting name because they signed – Jonu Smith, they signed Hunter Henry, they signed Nelson Aguilar, they signed Kendrick Bourne. So you might say, okay, where does that leave Mr. Jacoby Myers? And Matt Harmon just put out a new profile on receptionperception.com about Jacoby Myers. And Jacoby Myers is pretty fucking good as a route runner. And we saw him, you know what's crazy? All right, so one of the stats on Player Profiler, this is one of my favorite resources to use. And, uh, and in the BDGE draft guide, one of the articles I put out every year, my, my top 15, top 20 favorite websites, resources, and apps to use for your fantasy re uh, research. So this will obviously be listed in there. You can go cop the draft guide at BDGE store. It's not live yet, but it will be this week, hopefully. Um, we're revamping the entire website. So Marcus Callaway, I think a lot of people will think of him as, uh, why am I Marcus Callaway? I think Jacoby fucking Myers. All right, Nick, turn your brain on, please. I think a lot of people think of Jacoby Myers as like this small slot guy, but he's not. He's 6'2", 200 pounds, uh, and he was great last year. He was fantastic last year. When you look at a stat like Dominator rating down here, okay? Dominator rating is a receiver's percentage of total team receiving yards and team receiving touchdowns. So you're talking about like what percentage of your stats, um, what percentage of stats... Do um, does like a wide receiver? Sorry, I got a text message and I was reading it. Uh, what percentage of stats does a wide receiver take in in terms of like the total rate of the entire team? So like, okay, I'm not explaining this well. I'm fucking. I'm still very early on a Monday morning. I'm sorry. Number nine in the NFL. Basically, what he's saying is Jacoby Myers had 30 percent of his entire team's receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. So. When you take into context, right, Jacoby Myers' raw stats, I think he had 700 yards, let's see. He had uh, 81 targets, 
729 yards, 59 receptions. Guy had zero touchdowns. He's saying he had 30% of his team's total yards and touchdowns. And we're going to get bike into that after I am on the clock. All right, so we're seeing some of my homies go off the board. Actually, a lot of my guys didn't get picked, which I love to see. Jonah's still sitting there, rotting away down below. So we got our pick of wide receivers here, basically. And Jacoby will be my favorite. I actually think uh, Marquez Callaway has a better chance to be like the alpha in his offense for half a year. So I think I might take him over Jacoby, who has a lot more target competition. And we'll see what happens. What I might do is try to go Marquez Callaway, Jacoby Myers, Jonah Smith, and then grab Cam as my second quarterback in like the 17th round. That would be some big fucking brain moves. So we're going to go Marquez Callaway because all the hype out of camp has been that he's like the the guy. Let's uh let's check up on those on those little uh little blurby blurbs. Ooh, let's talk about some news and notes. Miko Harmon is listening to the Chiefs number 2 receiver on the team's first depth chart. Yeah, he fucking better be he's competing with a guy that's named Pringle. Deonta Foreman signed with um the Falcons, okay, cool. Uh, guys, I, I also want, like, every time someone signs with the team, it's, when you're signing this late into the season, you have just a, as good of a chance of making the team as you do of getting cut. So when De Deonta Foreman gets cut in, like, three weeks, don't be surprised. Ronnie Staley removed from the pup. Saquon Barkley. Poor Saquon Barkley is expected to start practicing this season. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Love to hear it. I don't really have any updates on that. Hunter Henry suffered an apparent shoulder injury after clotting. Oh, no, that's not good. Uh, but does give you more uh, more reason to start drafting more sh Jonu Smith, baby. Uh, what was I looking at? Oh, Callaway. Oh, shit. We on a clock? We on a skirt clock? Oh, someone took fucking Myers. You stupid fucking little motherfucker. All right. Uh, we'll just... <laughs> Settle for Jonas Smith, I suppose. Which, if the Hunter Henry shoulder is uh, shoulder injury is serious, Jonas Smith just became a, a wildly valuable target in fantasy. Uh, we're looking at Marcus Callaway. Like all the reports are just that he's dominating. He is dominating uh, camp. New Orleans advocates Luke Johnson said Marcus Callaway is taking ownership of the, being the top dog at receiver, and Traquan Smith is missing time with a leg injury. Nola's dot com. Jeff Duncan reports Marquez Callaway has been the breakout star of Saints camp. You know, so a lot of good. Again, something I always say is when there's smoke, there's fire. When you start hearing it from beat reporters, teammates, coaches everywhere, there's probably something to it. So Marquez Callaway is a guy that we need to be getting more and more shares of. Um, I actually want to check Twitter, see if we got any news on this Hunter Henry injury. Patriots tight end Hunter Henry injured his shoulder in Sunday's practice and is having an MRI per a source. While initial indications are that an injury doesn't appear to be serious, the injury is painful and Henry could miss time in the preseason. Okay. Uh, I'm not too, too concerned about that then. Darren Waller misses fifth straight practice. What the fuck is going on there? Nothing, huh? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Hey, y'all, subscribe to the channel, please. Fucking please. We're trying to hit 60K before the season starts. Darren Waller has missed three consecutive practices for an undisclosed reason. Vegas beat reporters couldn't say why Waller had missed practice this week. Head coach John Gruden is scheduled to speak to the media Saturday. Doesn't seem like we got any juice from that. Doesn't seem like we got anything from that. All right. All right. Well, I guess we'll just have to take their word for it that he's okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's uh let's break down some of the other situations. 
Ryan Fitzpatrick, pro actually, you know what? I might take Fitz here because I took Terry and let them stack up a little bit. Otherwise, if I miss on him, I'm fine doing some kind of stack of like, oh, we got fucking stacks everywhere. We got we got Jonah with Cam. We got fucking Taysom Hill to God with Marquez Callaway. So we're cool with, with uh, quarterback. We're not going to be reaching for QB2. Here's, uh, God, it's so ugly at running back. It is so ugly here. Damon Williams set to get some pass catching work uh, out there in Chicago. Yeah, I guess. I guess Tevin Coleman, I don't even hate as someone who's just getting completely written off because of a fourth round rookie who's five eight hype at a camp is ridiculous. <clears throat> Y'all sleep on Malcolm Brown, but right, yeah, right now none of these running backs are worth jumping over some of the wide receivers that are going off the board. Uh, this is where we start grabbing guys. This is why I have so much, so many shares of Rashad Perriman. I'm on like someone in this offense is going to get 100 plus targets. Someone's going to get 100 plus targets. MVS is going to have big weeks because Aaron Rodgers is there and he's pretty much the wide receiver too. He's been there as a wide receiver too for like five fucking straight years. Uh, so we're just going to take another share of MVS and let it roll. So now we have seven wide receivers. Uh, I actually really like how this team is shaping up. What do you guys think? Kyler, Derrick Henry, Clyde, Darrell Henderson, Gus Edwards, Scary Terry, Tyler, Boyd, Antonio Brown, Elijah Moore, Henry Ruggs, Marquez Callaway, Marquez Val. Oh, we got back bike to bike Marquez picks. Marquez in this motherfucker. Money Marquez. Ain't nothing more important than the moolah. Thirty chains, gripping grain, slick Rick the ruler. Uh Tunyon and Jonah Smith. I love that tight end stack. I really, really do. They're uh they're two of my must draft players. They're two of my absolutely must must have must draft weight round tight ends this year. Incoming text from FB God. Would I be able to bring my girlfriend to the NY for the draft events or last weekend before bike to school and want to make it there? But yeah, fucking come on, bro. You shitting me? So if you want to enter the giveaway to spend time with FB God and his girlfriend, sign up on Underdog. Deposit 10 bucks. Use promo code BG. You get to hang with the whole squad. Everyone from BG is going to be there. All right, well, there goes Ryan Fitzpatrick. We missed out on that. So I'm just going to keep drafting wide receivers from Detroit. We'll spread the love around. The one guy I'm not drafting is Ty Tyrell Williams. Maybe This is what's going to happen. He's going to be the leading wide receiver on that team probably, and all my teams with Amon Ra and Rashad Perriman are going to go to shite. Absolute fucking shite. Do we grab a fifth running back, though? Is there anybody down here that's going to get work? I actually think Boston Scott's like not a terrible pick. He's just getting wildly disrespected. I'm pretty sure he's like the clear RB2 in Philadelphia, but he's never getting picked. No one ever takes him. He's like the fucking loser at recess. There goes Perry. There goes Pellier. Uh, I'm going to grab Amon Ra. I don't even know if he's going to start this year, honestly. Have the Lions released a depth chart? This doesn't matter. Don't do this. I really, really suggest you not like Googling depth charts to see who's the starter because that's not good process at all. But I just wanted to see what they were doing out there. We're gonna take Amon Ra because I I just I think he's like Tyler Boyd, but he's in an he's like Tyler Boyd at the beginning of his career when he's in an offense that's kind of shitty. They're gonna have to throw the ball a lot, and uh, they don't have another weapon and or targets to really, you know, have Jared Goff rely on. Amon Ra, Ra Ra Saint Brown. Detroit wide receiver pecking order already seems pretty set. Rashad Perriman at X, Terrell Williams at Z. Amon Ross St. Brown versus Khalif Raymond for the slot job. Oh, he's going to fucking, he's going to wipe that ass for the slot job, no doubt. NFL beat reporters, beat reporters say Amon Ross St. Brown looks surprisingly polished for a rookie during the early portions of the offseason program. He's also drawn rave reviews for his work ethic, and that was on display again today. St. Brown stayed after practice. Yeah, whatever, 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 whatever. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. So I like I like a lot. Uh, I'm on around St. Brown, as you could tell by my exposure percentage and me just taking his ass right now. 
Uh, so that's eight wide receivers, and I feel like we're, we're pretty set there. So depending on what kind of games you're playing in, like they have tournaments as well. So if you guys are guys who play like on DraftKings or FanDuel and you play in like the big million-dollar prize pool like GPPs, they have those on Underdog as well. They have the Puppy, which is sick. It's a $5 buy-in, and I, I believe the prizes are like 250000 They also have Best Ball Mania, which is a $25 buy-in. I believe they actually just released the Big Dog. They didn't even fucking consult with me on that. They didn't ask me whether or not I would allow it. But they have the big dog that they um, that they released. I want to say that's a two hundred dollar or two hundred fifty dollar buy-in with mega mega prizes. And when you're in those types of leagues, you know you start to uh, draft a little bit differently. Um, you probably go with a lower running back build. Like the person who won the best ball mania last year, Justin Herzik, had four running backs on his roster, and I believe he had nine wide receivers. It's a lot about just hitting the right guys at the right time or whatever. Like last year, you had to have owned David Montgomery, Alvin Kamara, Tony Pollard. You know that all put up wide receiver top five running back sees uh fucking weeks at the end of the season. So it's impossible to kind of prepare for that thing. But just in terms of building lineups in this type of lineup, you're playing against just 11 other people, right? You're just playing in a regular fantasy league where you want to, uh, you want to beat 11 other guys. So I, I don't know. I don't know if going four running backs is a little bit too fragile at the moment. Um, so I'll probably grab a few more, running backs at least one there goes Tevin Coleman so I'll grab Boston Scott because I just think um I forget what I, I was reading some stuff on Boston Scott about how he was definitely getting a lot of first team or first and second team reps in training camp I just want to pay it forward since Boston Scott has emerged as a leader on his young roster Miles Sanders struggling with pass catching work. He's just he's an auto fade this year. You can't be drafting Miles Sanders, guys. Be better than that. So I have three picks left. We have the 16, 17, and the eighteenth round. Um I've been getting a lot of Quadri Allison, but clearly, I mean, them bringing in Deonta Foreman, they're kind of the same person. Deonta Foreman is like if Quadri Allison ate Deonta Foreman. Jerick McKinnon running with the twos. I actually don't hate Jerick McKinnon right now if he's going to be the backup to Clyde because, oh, no, I already have Clyde. So I'm not going to back – I'm not going to handcuff him. But we're going to go with Boston Scott here because I think Boston Scott will take some pass catching work, probably take some goal line work away from Miles Sanders for whatever fucking reason. But I know a lot of you guys like Kenneth Gainwell, and you'll just be like, oh, he's not a fifth-round pick. And I'll be like, yeah, he fucking is, my guy. Yeah, he is. But I think if you're going to go with a Philly running back at the end of the end of the draft, so if you're going to take them in the 16th, 17th, 18th round, I, I don't really hate splitting it between him and Gainwell. One of them will probably take pass catching duties there. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm going to sit on my tight ends here. We're going to go with two. Since we have Kyler, we'll probably also go with two quarterbacks, and then that allows us to either grab a. Cause you have to start three wide receivers, right? Where you're only starting two running backs and you're also starting a flex. So we like to do a ton of wide receivers on this, on this platform to, uh, to make sure that, you know, at least three of the nine guys are like top 15 scoring wide receivers that week, which is not really too much to ask for. I like Nico Collins. I like a little Josh Palmy action. I really like, Keelan Cole is a sneaky guy that'll get some Jets targets, but, you know, I already have a Jets wide receiver. I'm not doubling down that offense. Don't hate Travis Fulgham. It's probably about it on the guys that I don't hate. Kill Harry getting a lot of camp hype. You know, it's crazy that realistically, if you think about it, the only thing holding the Kill Harry back had been a wash Tom Brady and a, and a post-COVID Cam Newton. I would blame... Tom Brady. Tom Brady's old, way past his prime. If they had a better quarterback, then Nikhil Harry probably would have thrived immediately. Am I lying? No. You guys are just too dumb to understand. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, would I rather have Cam or Taysom? I'm a little bit worried both those guys will not be available when the, when the turn comes back to me. So we're going to go with uh, – we're going to grab Cam. I'm going to look like such a fucking idiot if Mac Jones wins the starting job. I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. Uh, I think Cam has a job for a long time, and I think he's going to be good for fantasy this year. But I've been wrong like once or twice in my life, so we'll see. 
What's going on? What's going on? Man, I have such a busy day today. This week's going to be so fucking busy. How y'all doing? How's everybody's week? How's everybody's weekend? If you're still here, there's no way anyone's still watching right now. What are we fucking 45 minutes, 50 minutes into it? 50 minutes in. Let's light up. Let's light up a little Palo Alto. Let's get the fucking vibe. You know the fucking vibes. You know the motherfucking vibes. I watched The Quiet Place Part 2 yesterday. Last night. I love those movies. Those are really good. Underrated movies. Anyone watch the new M. Night Shyamalan movie, Old? That motherfucker just stays missing. Like, whoever does his trailers, we, we need to hire him for BDGE to do, like, our trailers for shit. It'd be the same setup. Trailers, fire, content, terrible. M. Night Shyamalan hit on, like, what do he hit on? Signs and signs and six cents, like, 20 years ago. And that motherfucker's just been given billion-dollar budgets to make movies ever since. Movie old, the trailer looks sick. I heard it was not good at all. I, I still want to see old, and I want to see the new Candyman movie. The new Candyman movie looks awesome. It's like a new, it's like a, it's like an edgy, like urban twist on Candyman. It's sick, and I really love the main actor. He's a beast. Light her up. Smoke that shit. Ow! Fuck! Back. I hope the volume's been on, bro. I feel like I've been... Actually, the volume's been off. No, it hasn't. It's fucking amazing. Amazing. I did that a few times when I was a, a young up-and-coming content creator. If any of you guys are uh, content creators, by the way, or trying to get into the game, I love I love helping you guys out. I love helping people out that are trying to get into the content game. So uh, make sure you're you know following me on the socials, and you can hit me up on them. You can... You know, DM our brand account or DM my personal accounts or whatever, and I'll try to, to help you out. I, I'm going to be honest, though. A, a lot of you guys DM me on my personal stuff for fantasy advice, and I just don't do that. I very rarely do that. Um, I'll hit you up in the YouTube comment section sometimes. I will I'll, I'll answer anyone that's a Patreon member, right? If you go into Discord and start typing out shit, um, I'll try to get active into there. Uh, and you get access to my Q&A assaults on Saturday, which is like the private Q&A live streams. Otherwise, though... Uh, I typically only answer like content related questions, content creation related questions in the DMs of personal personal stuff. But uh yeah, we're about to wrap up. See there you go, Taysom Hill, Deshaun Watson, uh last round picks. Not a bad last round. Kind of sharp. No no fucking ridiculous picks here. Nico Collins a good a good pick, Byron Pringle I kind of like. Zacchaeus is a nice wide receiver 3 there in Atlanta. Chuba's strictly a backup, a uh, handcuff. I'm not, I'm not really trying to take him let me see if he took c mac no he didn't so i guess that's okay um we have our last pick and i'm gonna go with one of these wide receivers most likely unless there's a running back that i'm like that i absolutely don't fucking hate i guess Devonte booker is not a terrible pick because we don't know what saquon saquon's uh status is going to be like is he going to be out for the first couple weeks if so booker should probably operate as a workhorse and he'll probably get into my lineup for a couple weeks but then he puts up zeros afterwards Tariq Cohen, no. Smudge P. Ryan, Justin Jackson. Salvin Ahmed is a guy that I really don't dislike. I really don't hate Ahmed. Um, he had multiple games with like 18 touches last year. And we all just assume Miles Gaskin is a workhorse, and I think that makes sense. And they do bring in Malcolm Brown, but I, I don't know. I feel like we saw enough out of Salvin Ahmed last year that they like him, and he's going to be a piece of this offense. And then dividing between Justin Jackson and Josh Kelly is not a bad idea. But a better idea is not take either of the shitty running backs on the Chargers and take a good wide receiver. And that's Josh Palmer, their third-round rookie pick this year. So that's actually going to wrap up the draft. Uh, let me throw the draft board up on here for you guys. And remember, y'all, this video is brought to you by Underdog. Uh, it is the single best place to prepare for your drafts. I know a lot of you guys have your drafts coming up because you've been asking about the draft guide, and I'm, I'm trying so hard to get it out this week for you guys. I did put my my first iteration of the Superflex, my top 150 or top 175 Superflex rankings up on BDGE.store. You'll get access to that if you are a, either a Patreon member or if you have purchased the draft guide. Um, but Underdog has brought this to you, and the best place to prep is on Underdog. The link to download the app is the first link in the description. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Use the promo code BDGE. When you deposit $10 on Underdog, you'll be entered into the giveaway today. You got to do that by today, like tomorrow morning, the fucking absolute latest. And then, um, 
and you'll get 20, <coughs> $25 on top of that. So I love you. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is the final draft board. If you want to take a screenshot or some shit, I don't know why you would do that, but you know, all's in all's well that fucking doesn't end well. All right. Love y'all. Enjoy your Mondays. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Peace.